Hello, my name is John. I'm from the School of Science and Technology, and I'll be presenting my uh, STEM project, Underwater Turbines, and I'll be explaining the two physical laws that go into how it works. The first of which is rotational speed and energy. So we know that when a current, or like wind or water, flows over a turbine blade, which you can see here, it spins, so it's transforming the energy inside the current into rotational power, and then that rotational power spins a generator and turns it into electrical power that we use to make light and uh, to power our homes and all. And so, to calculate that rotational energy, we can use period, which is the amount of time it, uh, required for the turbine blade to complete a single cycle. So, if we record the blade spinning, then we can count how long it takes for it to complete one cycle, and then we can use that to determine rotational speed, which is 2 pi over t, radians per second. And then that radians per second can be used to determine exactly how quickly the blade is spinning in proportion to the current speed. And we call that tip speed ratio, which is where you multiply rotational speed by the radius of the rotor blade and divide it by the current speed in meters per second. Also, the second law that goes into this uh, project is conservation of energy. And that's because when the blade is transforming power from the current to the generator, there's a loss there. There's friction, there's heat, there's all sorts of things that um, cause it to lose power. And these various factors go into what's called Bet's limit. Bet's limit is essentially the top marker in the amount of power that a single turbine can produce at any given time. Bet's limit states that the maximum efficiency of any turbine is 59%, meaning that only 59% of the total power in any given current by a turbine blade is the maximum amount of power producible. Now we can calculate the power in a current by taking its density, the radius of the current, and the speed of the current. And we multiply these, and we get power in watts of the current at any given time. Then, using the generator, we can actually find the amount of power that we're producing and can compare that power produced to power in the current according to best limit. So we'd multiply total power by 59%, and then we could divide the power produced by that 59% to determine actual efficiency. And that's how conservation of energy would play into turbines. And how we could say, this is 80% efficient under best limit. Here's a couple of videos demonstrating the towing system used to test the turbine and a couple underwater videos that were recorded to find the rotational speed as mentioned earlier. Mm. As you can see in the videos, we could look at the blade and we could actually see that it was turning and that it completed a cycle in a specific amount of time. And that's the period mentioned. And from that period, we can find rotational speed and rotational speed to tip speed ratio. And tip speed ratio is actually the term used by engineers so that they can discuss how the blade spinning relates to the current. And that plays uh, into maintenance costs because if a blade is spinning too quickly, then it's going to exhaust the mechanical lifespan of the turbine, making it overall less effective over time and making energy cost more. And we all know that we want lower costs because we want lower energy bills. Now let's take a close look at the nacelle and the turbine blade itself, and I'll show you how it spins.
Here you can see the turbine blades as they were in the video. This is the blade that was a smooth surface. And you can see that it's not just a flat surface, it's not just a block. It actually has a bit of a contour to it, a bevel to it. And that's called an airfoil. And what an airfoil allows us to do is that when a current like air or water comes over the blade and it hits this leading edge, it goes over and under. And each side is a different length. So that when it goes over and under, the airflow or water flow, the current itself, is required to move at different speeds top and bottom, producing different pressures. And those different pressures are what actually push the blade and produce lift. And that's what actually makes the turbine blade move. It's the lift produced by that higher and lower pressure due to the airfoil. And this is referred to as Bernoulli's principle. Now, there's also drag in the blades, as we always know, when we look when water or anything comes against this, it's going to cause friction, which is going to produce heat, which is going to reduce the amount of energy. And that heat and that friction and all those different factors that slow down the current and minimize power production is referred to as drag. And that drag is placed against the lift, and lift versus drag is what aerodynamics refers to as lift over drag coefficients. And those coefficients can be used to determine the efficiency of an airfoil in different flows. Here you can see the nacelle where the actual generator is housed for the turbine. The generator is back here where the wiring comes out and the electricity comes out. Up here we have the shaft and as we move forward we see the shaft pokes out here at the stuffing box and then the shaft is attached to the turbine blade. And I'm going to show you as we spin the turbine blade. As you spin the turbine blade you can actually hear it turning the generator and producing power. So that if we had a voltmeter attached to the back end here to the wiring, we would see it produce a voltage. And if we applied a load, we would see voltage and load and be able to derive power in watts. Now you probably noticed that this blade is a little different from the other blade I showed you earlier. This is the control blade, and this is a blade that has a smooth edge on it. This blade, although, as you can see, has little protuberances on it. it. has little kind of jagged edges on the front. And these are leading edge tubercles. And so something interesting in engineering today is that tubercles are being applied to the leading edge turbine blades, specifically underwater turbines, which is we see here, this nacelle is actually waterproofed. So this turbine works underwater, as you saw in the videos earlier. It's actually 100% waterproofed. And these tubercles allow for lift to be increased and drag to be decreased in laminar currents. And laminar currents are currents in which the flow is acting in a single direction, is at a low velocity, and its Reynolds number is lower than 20,000. And Reynolds number is a non-dimensional number used by engineers to determine the, um, whether or not the current is laminar or turbulent. And turbulent water is water that has vortices in it. So if you turn your faucet all the way on and you see that the water kind of gets bubbly and it has air bubbles in it, that's turbulent. But when you turn it down very low, you see that the flow is kind of straight and very smooth. That's laminar flow. And so these tubercles, these protuberances on the leading edge here, they aid in increasing lift. And that lift we can detect through the power produced by the generator in the nacelle. And so we can compare the power produced by this turbine blade and by this turbine blade in similar conditions. And, that, and that's how we would determine whether or not this blade acts better in laminar currents or whether or not the control blade does.